Welcome to Vanessa and Melissa. Hey, how's it going? We are so excited about our segment today because we are talking about dieting. We're not excited about dieting. We're not excited about dieting at all. No. 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 But we feel it's an important topic as moms and women to talk about because a lot of us struggle with it, right? Or struggle with weight. We are here to admit that we both struggle with yo-yo dieting. In the past. In the past. <laughs> in the past. Yeah, we pretty much tried everything. South Beach, Atkins. Atkins eat clean. Yeah, eat clean. Um, Starvation. <laughs> that's awful. I never did that. <laughs> now, juicing. Yeah. Our, our uh, cayenne pepper drink. <laughs> when I met Vanessa, she was into maple syrup and cayenne pepper. I, and lemon. I don't know. I heard she was that. detoxing her inner system. <laughs> Not a good idea. I was a nasty person. She was, was really mean. That. And then I really started liking her when she started eating food again. <laughs> yeah. It's, a, it's, it's amazing how happy you are when you eat, you know? It, it, <laughs> it's true. Yeah. It, we were really interested in this topic because, truth be told, it is a major issue in our media right now. Women are being, you know, told to be thinner. and, and There's a lot of pressure on women. Totally. Yeah. And one article we found recently in the Scientific American uh, Mind magazine was something called Don't Diet. So of course we were drawn to that. So we loved it. Yeah, and there's like candy on our lips. Yeah. Anyways, what they're talking about in this article specifically is about how there's this you know huge issue with us dieting, mm-hmm. but that with most of us dieting, we are led to binging. Right. Which and in turn you end up gaining more weight, right? Exactly. And it's yeah. what they're now dubbing as the what the hell effect. Am I allowed to say that? Yes. <laughs> because that's what you say when you get on the scale and you see that you've gained five to ten pounds. You're like, what the hell is going on? <laughs> you were dieting, you were doing so good, you're like, I'm gonna take a weekend off, have a couple beers, you know, and then that turns into three cookies and seven pizzas of pizza later. And Whoa. <laughs> see, well, it's discouraging. I'm tall. I can eat a lot of food. <laughs> Give me a break. It's discouraging. Yeah. And so Melissa and I both have tried something called macros. Yes. Well, she introduced it to me. And we think it's an amazing way to stay healthy and manage your weight. And so we wanted to get into that subject today. Definitely. We talked about it a lot on our social media channels. And a lot of moms have asked us to talk more about it. So we went right to the source. and we The are expert. S- the expert. We're talking to the guru today behind If It Fits Your Macros. Dr. Lane Norton. Thanks for joining us today, Dr. Lane. Hi. Thank you, ladies. I appreciate you having me on. Yeah, yeah. thank you. So can you tell us out there, um, tell us for all the women out there, what is If It Fits Your Macros? Yeah. Okay, so that, that's an excellent question. Uh, so first off, we should define macros. So macros are basically the macronutrients, which are protein, carbohydrates, and fats. And a lot of people, you hear things in the media Fat's bad, carbs are bad, protein's bad. It's, it's always funny, I always say, well, we should probably, since everything causes some kind of health problem, we should just not eat, according to the media. Um, but if it fits your macros, is basically, most diets out there are restrictive type, exclusive diets. So you're excluding some food groups, you're restricting some food groups, you're saying, think about what's out there, don't eat bread, don't eat carbs, don't eat wheat or whatever it may be. And so what, if it fits your macros, basically the idea is nothing is off limits, but you have to make it fit a budget, okay? A macronutrient budget. And my budget may be different than yours. And this is you know my experience working with uh, over a thousand people over the last 10 years, is that what some people can lose fat on is very different from other people. So somebody may be able to lose fat on you know, 1,700 calories a day, over 150 grams of carbohydrate a day, that sort of thing. But basically it boils down to, so for example, uh, a lot of people will say, well, you know, you're, you're saying there's a diet where you can eat whatever you want. Yeah, we're like, yeah. what? <laughs> Tell us about it, please. <laughs> More. So, so and, and nothing is off limits, but the problem, what you're gonna find is, is that if you just eat whatever you want, you can't hit your targets. So if you're trying to hit something that's friendly for body composition, you're trying to get enough protein in and your carbs and fats, you're not gonna get that just eating pizza, okay? Now, you might be able to fit pizza in, in moderation as part of your diet, right? And so I always uh, compare it to, let's say I've got somebody who, let's call them a macro millionaire, okay? They've got a really good metabolism, they lose fat in like 2,300 calories a day. Okay, well if I'm a millionaire, if I make a million dollars a year, is it okay if I go spend fifty thousand dollars on uh, a new car? If it means I still pay my mortgage and I get my retirement taken care of and I pay for my kids' college and all that kind of stuff? Sure. Yeah. yeah of course. <laughs> sure. Yeah, sure. It's fair. Fine. But if I make seventy thousand dollars a year and I want to buy a fifty thousand dollars sports car and it means I can't pay my mortgage or I can't pay for the utilities or I can't pay for something crucial and I can't check all those other check boxes. 
then it doesn't make sense, right? Right, right. So maybe I'm somebody with a faster metabolism. I can lose weight on more calories. If I can hit everything and I can still fit a bowl of ice cream in at night, what's wrong with that? Right. Why is that wrong? Yeah. Right? Okay, so that I, and I think what we've been guilted into is the idea that you have to suffer in order to make progress. And that's just not, the, that's just not necessarily true. Right. Okay, so I have a question for you. I've done, I've tried macros, and I'm pregnant right now, so I'm, I'm not doing it so much. But beforehand, I did, and I, I found it, I was really successful for it. I did a fitness com competition. But so one thing that I always wanted to learn more about was how is a calorie, say, from a Big Mac considered the same as a calorie from a piece of salmon? Because a lot of people fight you on that, right? They're saying, like, why would you eat that food? You're not going to be nutritionally benefiting from I mean, it. I, I chose to eat more in a clean way, but I'm just curious about that point. Sure. So first off, congratulations on your pregnancy. Thank you. Um, second off, uh, I'm not going to argue that they're necessarily the same. Oh, okay. So, but we have to, what we do have to do is we have to keep in, in mind our hierarchy of what's important, okay? Diets don't fail because somebody didn't eat salmon instead of a Big Mac. They fail because people cannot stick to them, okay? Think about every diet you've ever done. Why did it eventually fail? Because you, it's had you stopped doing it. <laughs> Low willpower. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Well, but here's the problem. Uh, my friend, Dr. Corey Probst, talks about the what the hell effect. And she talks about willpower. And the problem with willpower is that your willpower all comes from the same place. You want a, a plan that requires the minimal amount of willpower because it's not like you have willpower for your job and willpower for your kids and willpower for your husband and, well, and willpower for well, your training, okay. willpower for your nutrition. <laughs> it all comes from the same place. So when do we find ourselves really falling off the rails? When we're heavily stressed, we're low on time, all this. So we want something that even when everything goes to crap, we can still stick to it, okay? So sustainability and consistency is the most important thing. And so what I will say is that, sure, maybe that salmon, and if, if you had salmon with, pot, with, with some whole wheat pasta and some broccoli, and it has the same macronutrient content as a Big Mac, maybe, maybe you know, nutritionally, that's a little bit better. But if having that Big Mac every once in a while keeps you from going crazy and binge eating, then it is better because it, it speaks to sustainability. So for me, I don't crave like fast food or anything like that, but I love ice cream. So every night I work a little bowl of ice cream into my macros and it keeps me sane and it, it keeps me so I don't feel deprived and I can do that from now till the end of time. I don't have to diet. I don't have to go on anything uh, super restrictive that makes me feel terrible. Right, and right. I, that we, I think that just works so well with kids too because you don't want to be depriving yourself in front of your children at birthday parties, holiday events. Like you want to be able to indulge in things by managing it, and right? And if they, you know, if you have some Cheerios with them or something, yeah. you don't feel guilty, just add it into your, your number at the end of the day. Right, so you send exactly. examples. Exactly. So right. Yeah. Well, we, we love this concept, obviously, because we love that, you know, you can choose different foods and ultimately just hit these different goals with protein, carbs, and fat, and, and, and fiber goals as well to make sure you're getting enough of the, your fiber into your diet. Yeah. Um, but what are some tips you might have for somebody who's looking into this a little bit more after today on really what helps you stick to it? Well, yeah, what keeps you successful using macros? So I think the first thing to point out is that we use, we view willpower as something of an ethical judgment, right? So if somebody has less willpower than somebody else, um, they must be somehow a bad person. And what I will say is that, yes, you're going to have to make some sacrifice, even with flexible dieting, because it means you're having to eat mindfully. Like you can never just kind of say, screw it, I'm just going to do whatever I want. Um, but it also enables you to eat what you want. But some people are just going to have a lower willpower threshold than others. And so what we need to do is figure out what maximizes sustainability for them. If you're somebody and you can eat, you know, you, you feel like you're not drawn to calorie-dense foods, you don't care about candy, none of that, and you get most of your food from nutrient-rich, dense sources, that's fine, but it doesn't make somebody else who, you know, feels like they want to have a bowl of ice cream or some Skittles or something like that every once in a while, doesn't make them any worse. And we've got to figure out what makes sense for them. I think the biggest thing starting out is this can be kind of intimidating because people go, I have to track protein and carbs. I have no idea about any of this. Like, how do I do it? Um, so first off, it's I always like to use the budget anal analogy. When you first start out, and if you're trying to, to make a household budget, it can be very intimidating. And so the best thing you can do before you even make a budget, don't try to make a budget, 
just figure out where your money's going, right? So write down right now where your money's going. So the best thing you can do right now is don't change the way you're eating, just figure out where your calories are going. How much protein are you taking in? How much carbs are you taking in? How much fat are you taking in? Get yourself a good baseline, and then you can make adjustments based off of that. And you may surprise yourself with what you're eating. And the one thing I will tell people is, when you're tracking, give a realistic accounting. Don't, people even lie to themselves. Yeah. <laughs> Don't lie to yourself. <laughs> They'll do three days of really, really good eating and say, yeah, that's, that's what I eat. When in reality, when they go out on the weekend, you know, they're having beer and ice cream and pizza and all this. It's like, well, track those days too, right? Track and let's get an Friday idea of what the right. average is. Yeah, yeah. and this, these are such good tips. Thank yes, you so thank much. Thank you so much. We really appreciate your time with us today, Lane. And for more information on macros or to learn more about what Lane has talked about today, you can go to his website, biolane.com. And thank you again, Lane. Thanks so much, Lane. It's great information. And stay with us because up next, we, are be we will be going to Elsa's Kitchen where we will be cooking some delicious and healthy food.